Good afternoon. It's Skyway at Noon. I'm Pastor Greg Brown from Skyway Church in Goodyear, Arizona, and you are joining us with our special guest, Dr. Brian Alton. Apostle Brian, you and I go way back. We're just great friends, and the last program we did together, you brought such a great message of hope about about you know how you transitioned through the pandemic to become an ambassador of hope Amen. as a chaplain. You know, you know yeah. everything shifted from being an international leadership trainer to being a chaplain to people in the hospital that were patients as well as staff and doctors and others. Today, I want us to visit a little bit about where we see the Lord taking us from this time. We've been dealing with the pandemic for like a year. The Lord gave you a vision, said something was coming that was going to be like fire on the earth. But how do we advance forward? How do we get out of isolation and get out of fear and get out of all these things? How do we, by the grace of God, take those next steps so that we can start moving forward? <laughs> what, what kind of things are you thinking about? Well, wow. that's that's a huge one. I think that uh, we're all navigating through. We're all we're all trying to find our way. Yeah. But uh, you know. Uh, it's by the grace of God, really. I mean, God's grace is sufficient for us. And, um, you know, uh, I, I, what I've been doing is just really, I've, I've gone back to a place of intercession. Amen. A place of prayer that I, I don't think I've been in ever. I mean, I, 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 you know, we've been praying together for yeah. over 20 years. And, uh, and in fact, that's how we met was, yeah. was, uh, we were gathering leaders to pray, uh, for our state and for our nation. Uh, and so I've always, uh, been a man of prayer and intercession, but this whole, uh, pandemic and everything that's, that's happened, this, this new era that we, we've, we've shifted into in, in our nation, in our world, has uh, really brought me back to a place of prayer such as I've never been before. Wow. So I'll start with that by saying that um, how I'm moving forward is just getting direction from the Lord and intercession. Amen. You Go know, on. starting with prayer. Starting with prayer and remembering that God's word does not return void. Amen. That's good. Right? But it accomplishes what it's set out to do. Yeah. And so God's word is life. God's word is power. Uh, God, and, and God's word is truth. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, the scripture says. So it's been rough, you know, as an apostle, I'm not going to lie, uh, you know, I have many, like you, uh, I'm a man of authority, I have many uh, pastors and leaders and outreach ministries, affiliate churches under my apostolic care. Yes. But it's been, it's been uh, extremely difficult to, uh, I'll use the word navigate, like mm -hmm. we were talking in the office before yeah. the show, to be able to navigate this crisis to navigate uh and i appreciate your book so yeah, much amen. and i've looked at that by the way through this coming back, uh, as amen. i've been uh, working with leaders amen. globally because this whole thing has split up split the church right down the center yeah and crazy. you have you know two major opposing viewpoints yeah and a lot in between there and then they're all looking to us to solve the problem or to answer those questions yeah. or uh, or the challenges of why we're not doing this or why we don't stand up for that or why we're not, you know, have a stronger uh, position on something. And so uh, what I've been doing as we're transitioning now and, and moving forward is just to keep people focused on the word, Amen. on worship, on prayer, come on. See those things that matter, right? Those yes. things that make for the life of the church and the believer. Mm -hmm. See those things will remain. Amen. Right. All this other stuff is gonna is is gonna change. It's you know we're, it's never gonna look like it was before. That's right. Right, yeah. and it's gonna continue to 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 unfold to you know manifest and morph into whatever it's gonna be. Right, but. Who never changes? Jesus. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He never changes. And so 
we have to keep people focused on his love, on his grace, on his goodness. Come on. Because you know what? God is so good, even in spite of this pandemic. Yes. God is so good in spite of all of the crazy and horrible things that we hear every day. You know, we can't even keep up with what's happening. I mean, one major uh, thing, uh, crisis will happen in the earth, and and it's all over the news. And uh, and whether you can believe what they're saying or not, that's a whole other thing, right? Uh, But, but, you know, it'll happen on the news, and then something else will happen within that afternoon, and you'll forget all about the first one. And you can't even keep up with it. It's just so... The events are coming so quickly simultaneously simultaneously yeah they're accelerating yes. right um but we have to keep people focused on the truth amen that's good brother. right which is the word of god there you it go. all comes back to the word of god amen it all comes back to to him amen and he's good you know and we have to keep we, we have to help people focus on the good things, mm-hmm. on those things that are pleasant, on those things that are, you know, yes, uh, good, so that we can maintain a positive, faith-filled attitude yeah. in spite of this crazy pandemic. Praise God. That's so good. That's good advice, man. Yeah. Because, you know, that's what, what I'm seeing is that along these lines, what you're saying is that God wants us to be an example to other people. And if we're all running around like our hair's on fire and we just, you know, we've lost our faith and we've lost everything else, you know, how in the world is this, this going to, uh, yeah. you know, we, we have to come back to the basics. Really do. You know, Jeremiah said it this way. He said, ask of me to return to the ancient paths, mm. plural, out of Jeremiah 16. You know, ask of me and I will bring you back to the ancient paths. These, these, Crisis that that we're facing now, maybe you know things that we've never seen, but in the in the history of man, God has always given us a path exactly. to make it to the other side. He's always done that, Amen. Um, and there's always, uh, you know, when when there's crisis in the earth, right, and 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 the earth seems to be the darkest is when the glory gets the brightest. Come on. Right? Isaiah said, darkness, yea, thick darkness shall cover the earth. Yeah. And and I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. We know what's happening in our world. Yeah. And then he said, thick darkness, the peoples. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, it's dark out there, folks. I mean, <laughs> you know, right. we all we all can see it. Yeah. Uh, every single day, darkness, thick darkness, shall cover the earth, and deep darkness, the peoples. Yeah. But he said, my glory, oh, hallelujah, need the glory. my glory shall arise on you. You know, when the first great awakening took place in America, just before uh, that happened, uh, the world uh, at that time was very dark. You know, and um, what they were encountering, what they were experiencing was a lack of the word, was a lack of the prophetic voice. It was a lack of signs and wonders and miracles, right? And it was dark during that era of time, the 1800s. Uh, And they were experiencing something much different than we are. But yet the darkness was there. It was it was it was, it was their, their crisis for the hour. Yeah. It was it was it was their darkness of the hour. Yes. And then what happened? The Lord sent a great awakening, completely and totally transformed not only this nation but the entire world. It created a global revival. It created an absolute global global revival, and we're here as a result of it. We're amen. fruit of that. Amen. Yes, amen. And so I believe that what God is about ready to do is such. Uh, there's such glory coming, such as we've never seen in the history of mankind. I, I, I just Whoa. truly believe this. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, mm-hmm. and the glory of the Lord is risen where? Upon you. So as it gets darker on the outside, on. as, as it, the thick darkness covers the, mm-hmm. the earth and the peoples, he said, My glory shall be seen in you. So it's going to get brighter on the inside. Yeah, Hallelujah. It's going to get brighter uh, in the ecclesia, in the house of the Lord, in, in with the people of God. And he said, my glory shall be seen where? Upon you. Amen. Upon the people. And then it says, 
that kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that. what is going to shift this thing? The glory of God. Amen. It's the glory of God. That's what we need. But, but Apostle, we have to get back to the basics. Yeah. We have to get back to those things that matter, that make for the, the life of the believer, the life of the church. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we're not going anywhere. Amen. Amen. There you go. <laughs> In fact, you know, uh, Scripture shows us that we're going to get stronger and stronger. And it's hard to see that right now because... Sure. Uh, what these eyes have seen is the church is divided. I'm just being transparent yes, yes. and being honest, but I believe that a true revival uh, of unity, of true unity, is coming. We've always been, yeah. uh, you know, uh, ministers of unity. We've yes. always been, you know, uh, uh, our hearts have always been about seeing people come together. Absolutely, that corporate anointing. But uh, this this goes. What's what's coming, Apostle, is greater than we can imagine, come and I believe on, that what's on. coming with it will be signs, wonders, and miracles, like in the Book of Acts. Amen. You know, because there's this promise about greater works shall you do, yes. and we haven't seen that yet. Yes. But I believe we're going to. I believe we're going to. Um, and so, uh, you know, all this has to take place. Yeah. The Bible is unfolding before our very eyes. It's no longer, uh, this book is no longer, uh, you know, uh, people cannot say that this book is filled with lies, myths, and fairy tale, tales and fables. Yeah. This book is coming alive before our very eyes. The book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, the yes. book of Revelation is all playing out before us. You're going at, headlong into it. Or headlong into it. Yeah. And this word is sure. It's true. Amen. Amen. So we got to get people back to the Word of God. I like that. We really do. Um, because there's a gospel that's being preached today, Apostle, that I don't believe is, is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. I believe it's a false gospel. It's a tickle the ears gospel. It's a make everyone feel good and pleasant gospel. It's a, a tolerance gospel. Mm. It, is a, uh, it is a gospel that's leading people astray and the bible tells us as you know that in the last days that these things are going to happen and that the very elect could be deceived if possible yes and so um a lot of what we're hearing today now say you know people might say well what gives you the right to say that well we've been in this thing a long time (laughs) we have brother (laughs) I celebrate, I don't know, I know we're about close, but I celebrate 39 years of serving the Lord in some sort of full, you know, uh, ministry capacity uh, since I was 16 years old uh, in this state, Yes, (laughs) you know, so, um, so I, I feel like I can speak to that a little bit. Come on. And, um, and so we need to get back to the pure and unadulterated word of God. I love it. Do we have a minute? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I just, I'll let you just wrap with what you're sensing okay. and okay. share it and pray it, man. All right. I, I just want to uh, read out of uh, Esther. I believe we're right there. I believe the church, the Esther is a symbolic of the ecclesia, of where the church is at right now. And, uh, you know, everybody knows the story of Esther. It was a critical time. Yes. Um uh, you know, Mordecai was giving her some instructions. She finally made it to the king's court, and she was prepared for years mm-hmm. to be in his presence and to be the queen, right? And uh, we know that Haman was busy at work trying to annihilate yes. the Jews, yes. God's people, and annihilate temple built the temple being re- rebuilt. Yes. So prophetically, we can put all that into place yes. where we're at now. But uh, he says, he says, uh, and Mordecai, and this is uh, chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, verse 13. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. Hmm. So what does that mean? What that, what that saying is, let's not think that, you know, if we remain silent, if the church remains silent, if, if, if we allow them to stifle us and to, to, uh, to 
quiet us, to to gag us. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking yes. about us yes. as leaders. Yes. Don't think. So in other words, if, you, if we choose to put our head in the sand through all of yeah. what's going on in our nation, what's happening in our world, if we choose to remain silent, don't think, uh, Mordecai says, that um, you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. Mm. Or we could say, don't think that we'll escape uh, any more than all, all the other people in this world. What's what what what's coming or what's upon us or what's already here? Yeah. But he says this. He says, "For if you remain completely silent at this time, mm. relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews. So so deliverance and relief will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Mm. Yet who knows?" whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. What a word. So if we remain silent, Apostle, the church could perish Mm. with everything happening. Mm. I mean, this was upon Esther. Yes. It's upon us today. Yeah. The church is like Esther. We are... We are here. We're, you know, uh, we're being challenged. We're we're trying to be stifled. We're trying to, in some states, trying to be done away with, to be annihilated, to be gagged, to be, you know what I'm trying yeah, to say. You can't. You can't gather. You All can't gather. You can't worship. You can't sing. Yes. You can't. You know all of these things, and so I believe we're the Esther of our time. That's a good word. For such a time as this. Amen. That if we choose to remain silent, Mm -hmm. the Lord always has a plan. He He always, right? He will will (laughs) prevail. He's going to bring deliverance. Amen. Somehow, we may perish, but it's coming because he still has a plan. Come on. He always has a G plan. Amen. The God plan. And we see that with Herod when he tried to come and say, hey, tell me where Jesus is and I'll go worship him. He told the Magi and you know what his intentions were. And the Lord warned them. So he always has a plan. Yeah. But I think we're in, we're in this place right here and right now. We are in a very critical moment in time in this dispensation of the church in this hour in our generation that if we remain silent don't think Mm. that we won't perish along with everyone else because we will but the lord will raise up deliverance for his people and for his house right but who knows if we were here if we're here in the now, in this moment, in our nation, in this world, with everything happening, good, bad, and ugly, yeah. that we're here, and we talked a little bit about this in your in your office, for such a time as this, like it or not, we're end time preachers, yes, apostle. We are <laughs> ready or not. Here he comes, yes, right? Amen. But you and I have to be the Esthers of this day and of this hour. Amen. And so, what did Esther do? She said. Call a fast. Mm. I want you to start praying, and I'm going to fast and pray. And thank God for her courage yes. and for her boldness. Because you know what happened to the first queen that went in before without yeah. being summoned. Yeah, She was beheaded. What are they trying to do to the church? They're trying to take us out. Yes. Trying to, the head speaks of authority. It mm-hmm. speaks of, you know, uh, headship, trying to take it off. Yeah. But we're the Esthers of this day. We're the Esthers of this hour. Oh, yeah. And so we have to be bold. We have to rise up. We've already been prepared, right? Esther had to be prepared uh, in the oils and, you know, all of this preparation Mm -hmm. to come before the king. And we have. We've been going at this a long time. Amen. We're prepared. Now it's time that we rise up in our kingdom purpose and destiny and we get bold. And we go before our king and we 
believe that God is going to restore, he's going to protect, he's going to heal his people, he's going to preserve and save his people, and he's going to take care of the Hamans of this world. Come on. He's going to turn all that upon them, right? Yes. Uh, well, isn't that how God does it? Hallelujah. He always works it for, for our good, but he turns it around on the enemy. The very thing that, the very gallows that was prepared for Mordecai. Mm-hmm. Oh, Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. It, you know, all these things that the enemy is doing in our nation and in, in, in uh, to, trying to do away with the church and trying to do away with our expression of worship. Mm-hmm. God's going to turn that upon the enemy. Amen. Come on. And we're going to go before the king and we're going to see the glory of God. We're going to see restoration. Amen. We're going to see God's people be saved. Amen. And we're going to see a new church arise in this last day. Pray into that for our Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you that those that are watching today, I know that, 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 that those that are watching are feeling stirred. There's something happening on the inside. And I, I just, I just, I just breathe into that right now prophetically, Lord. We just pray into that. We ask that you would fan the flames. Oh, God. We just pray that the wind of the Spirit would blow on. on the flames of the coals of their life, Lord, and that that fire would yeah. begin to, to to burn and and to arise and, and like a fire, like Jeremiah, like that fire, that word shut up in their bones, oh God. Lord, that they would be like Esther, Lord, that they would be bold, that they would be courageous yes. in this moment, in this hour, that they are here for such a time as this. And I heard the Lord saying, don't don't be worried about your children and your grandchildren. Come on, uh, come Rabba on. Come on. Because you know, many of uh, many of God's people are saying, the, "This is the world. This we don't know what's happening. We're never going back to normal." But who knows what's coming down the road? And our children, our grandchildren, are going to have to uh, to live in this world. But but I just heard the Lord saying that don't think like that because He knew that they were coming. He knew that they would be born. Who caught? He knew that they would be born in this moment, in this time, in this era of, of this dispensation of the church and, and, and this generation and the one to come of this world. God says that they are born for such a time as this. And he's going to use them to bring the great glory awakening. He's going to use them to see transformation and true revival and glory come to this nation come and to this this world Come and they're on. the ones he's going to use so wow. stop thinking of that so negatively but Come just on. like Esther yes. she was born for such a time in her generation in that moment in that uh, geopolitical uh, uh, crisis that was happening and all that was going on and she rose up and God used her to save an entire nation an entire nation was saved and the temple began to be rebuilt. And so I just hear the Lord saying, start speaking into your children. Start speaking into your grandchildren. Start training them, giving them the word of God, teaching them those things, those basic, beautiful, wonderful fundamentals of the gospel, those, those first things that will remain even into their older age. God loves you. He loves your children. He's always got a plan. <laughs> Uh, But if we remain silent, child of God, if you remain silent in this time, don't think that we won't perish like everyone else. Mm. But we were born for such a time as this. And I believe God doesn't have to raise up some other deliverance. He can do it through us, apostle, right now. What a great word. Apostle Brian, thanks for being our guest in Skyway at noon, and uh, just look forward to spending more time with you. Let's say goodbye to all of our family. Thanks for joining us today at Skyway at noon. Be blessed, my friends.